Hello, and welcome to the Argyle CIO Leadership Forum Data Innovation 2024. My name is Vicki Lynn Brunska with Argyle. It's great to have everyone joining us today. I have some information to share with you, and then we'll turn the floor over to our esteemed opening keynote speaker. First, we would like to take a moment to thank today's sponsors, Cohesity and SAP. Our sponsors are committed to providing you with valuable content and a great overall experience today. And at any time during the event, you can visit their virtual booths from the main agenda page. And those do include complimentary materials, information, and meet and greet opportunities. We also welcome you to stay socially connected throughout today's event. For those of you who are active on social media, please use the hashtag Argyle Digital and follow us at Argyle Exec Forum and be sure to follow Argyle on LinkedIn for special announcements. I just want to take a moment to touch on our content neutrality policy, which we've curated based on the feedback we received over the year from our members. We've worked uh, closely with our speaking faculty to ensure that you receive a set of balanced and neutral viewpoints during the sessions today, and we appreciate our members' support of this policy. And finally, and most importantly, we want to hear from you. So during each session, we encourage you to submit your questions and comments in the Q&A box on your screen. Following each presentation, we have set aside time for our speakers to weigh in on those questions. Thank you everyone again for joining us today. Now let's get started. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Gregory Bell, Security and Privacy Executive, Healthcare Cybersecurity at Amazon Web Services. We are so excited to have Greg with us for his opening keynote presentation titled Data Pathfinders, the Future of Data Le Leadership. Welcome, Gregory, and over to you. Thank you. So data has evolved and it's important to understand the evolution of data within the enterprise in order to provide data leadership. When the internet started, the focus was on transaction response time within online transaction processing systems, OLTP. Usually this meant data was in an access database or upgraded to the SQL server. These systems powered websites, and the focus was on improving reliability, availability, and scalability. As transactions grew on e-commerce sites, we wanted to know who was using the system, from where, what they were doing, for how long, most importantly, for how we could offer more value to existing customers and bring in new customers. This brought a whole slew of applications around business intelligence and reporting or analytics engines. Take commercial travel as an example. Early websites pointed out the lowest flight price available from point A to point B. Then came websites that compared across other websites and aggregated results. Now we have the ability to choose a budget and have the website or app suggest better days for us to travel. Our decision has transformed from just getting data and then taking action into an action being recommended to us. A, stat a data strategy can be defined as unsuccessful unless it ties into your business priorities and your business strategy. Nothing happens because of a database, a model, or a dashboard. When companies fail is in change management and adoption of data strategy. An intro to data leadership is defining what is data leadership. The importance of an executive role in data leadership and contrasting data leadership with governance and management. So let's start with the definition of data leadership. The previous definition was someone responsible for data governance, definition, standards, strategy, controls, architecture, tools and technology, which can be easily centralized. The new definition is taking this definition or the previous de definition and adding on the skills to influence and collaborate within the business to deliver business intelligence, third-party oversight, reporting capabilities, and advanced analytics for business use. So it's extremely important to have an executive role in data leadership need someone actively engaged in the project. You need a team builder, a problem solver, and most importantly, a cheerleader. Someone that doesn't, isn't, excuse me, only concerned with data governance and data management, but someone who can influence any decisions to fulfill organizational goals and provide strategic planning for the company. 
So what do we mean by a business being data-driven? We're talking about tracking and understanding what your business actually does. We're talking about being able to prescribe or actually predict different things that are going to happen because of different patterns or different weather things or something uh, happening within your business. We talk about how decisions are made. This can be really challenging in data. When we talk about trying to track value, what's the value of a good business decision versus a bad decision? That can be pretty difficult. And this is one of the challenges that we often find. Tracking the value of data can be difficult, but it's very important because businesses speak in terms of value. If we speak in terms of technology, we're not gonna get too far. When you mention data leadership, people start talking about governance and management. Data leadership isn't just about governance and management. It, data leadership should be about value your role brings in an orga organization and why this should be an executive role. Now, the way I correlate that is if you're going to be in there and you're doing, and all you're doing is waiting to take orders from other parts of the business and what you should be doing uh, and all you're doing is governance and management, you're not really being an executive. For instance, can you think of a chief marketing officer that goes into an organization waiting to be told how to market the products? No, they're gonna start to understand the organization a little more, what's important, what's vital, and they're gonna go and enact their marketing plan. Well, leaders in data need to be very value focused. People who can actually stick stitch this technology layer and the data later and the business later. Data strategy is not just a technology focus. It is a combination of different factors and technology is just one important part of how we enable it. Data strategy is a mindset. It is the people and process utilizing technology. For instance, your larger corporations are investing in data but only about 24 to 30% of them think they're doing it right. From a holistic perspective, you have a cycle of three to five years where a new person comes in, creates a new data warehouse or a new data lake or new AI technology, and then you go through that loop again in three to five years. A new person comes in, new technology, another loop. However, what is not being done is attaching, collaborating with the business being accountable to the business to say and actually change the organization to be more data driven. So we asked the business to have a little bit of data literacy and to communicate their most important priorities, their problems, challenges. This is, this is what we mean by mindset. Mindset is all about getting your business strategy, your priorities, your goals to be met in ways in what you're doing with the data. If you have a data science team and they're not working on what the CEO thinks the five, the five biggest priorities are in that business, then there's a disconnect in your company's mindset. Then you have the people in process. However, there's a possible disconnect with your leadership. They might understand the people in process terminology to mean technology when it's not. From a data leadership perspective, we can build a data model, but if no one is adopting it, then we have a problem. This is where we are today. This is a very easy to build model, but it's very hard to go and build the layers around it to effectively get it into an application, get it into an embedded experience, get into something that someone is using. Therefore, people and process is mistaken for technology. When I think of technology, I think of an application tool or something like Snowflake or Databricks or Redshift. This technology can do the job if you get the people and process correct. But what does it mean to be data-driven? A data-driven company will focus on solving customer priorities rather than finding data and creating reports. They will centralize decision-making and adapt to business priorities with purposely built data stores. They will test and measure ideas with data and continuously evaluate with feedback. So what's the difference between a modern data strategy and a traditional one? 
Well, in the past, a traditional solution was very monolithic, very platform orientated. If you think about it, how many organizations are like, well, we can't go and work on any use cases because we have to go and build the data warehouse or the data lake or the processing layer. This is not feasible any longer. Hopefully you have designed your governance layer and your processes to effectively be the most efficient and fastest way to get the job done safely. Governance is no longer saying, we have to go through this process or no, you can't have the latest version of Python or the latest tech package or the latest library. These type of responses give the appearance it's the technology issue on the outside. However, when you look at it, you start to realize this is happening because of a shadow architecture or shadow IT. You ask yourself why and realize it's there because of the process. What data-driven organizations are doing well is they're defining the problem statement, they're testing and validating it, they're working on what we are all taught in school, the scientific method. We have a hypothesis, we have some data, we test it, we'll learn from it. We grow and we keep going. Sounds a little bit like a flywheel. Our flywheel approach in terms of what we do with data strategy is a big part of that. It's all about first, how do we set up the, the speed to go and solve problems? Secondly, what are your capabilities and where you, do you need to be? Third, and finally, how do you actually do this at scale and realize it's not a project, it's a program. It doesn't end. Data strategy doesn't end. So if you have a three to five data strategy window and you think you need to deliver these platforms, you're not actually doing a data strategy, you're doing an architecture technology strategy. These companies, uh, there are companies that are getting it right. Definitely start with the problem, not the solution. They look at trying to integrate their core business priorities and problems into the mix of the data science solutions or the uh, business intelligence teams. And they focus on coaching and adoption. So data strategy and customer guidance. There are steps you can use to guide customers through the data strategy. There are building customer capability for repeated mobilization. Some recommendations. Think big, start small, scale fast. Focus on delivering business priorities fast. Work backwards from customer challenges give grow leadership conviction and business IT alignment on data ownership. You need to increase the agility and collaboration on data products across data producers and your consumers. Foster data literacy through leadership principles and daily use of metrics and business decisions. For multidisciplinary teams, including business and technology with data skills, upskill and empower self-service for producers and consumers. Incentivize your data producers by creating metrics on the availability and completeness of the data. Build a community, celebrate success by publishing blogs and writing stories about what you're doing. You need to automate your tasks to increase adoption and then build trust and confidence in data with privacy, security, compliance, and federated governance. The last recommendation is based on a broader governance challenge, which is data privacy, GDPR, or compliance areas of data. When you think about the marketplace, monetization of data and externalization of data is data just a new revenue source? Yeah, it can be, but what cost does that come with? So one of the challenges around governance is it's not just about what it is, but are you allowed to do it for regulation and should you do it for ethical reasons? It's not about relying on a council of people to make ethics and governance decisions and actually your engineers have some 
capabilities or capacity to think about the problems themselves. So democratize them. And then a process to get the decision made as quickly as possible. It shouldn't sit in a queue waiting for weeks to get it a decision. If your process takes you weeks to get an answer, then the, you have a wrong process, particularly in today's technology. So I'll open the floor for any questions you may have. Thank you so much, Greg. I do see um, a couple of questions and Melissa will be adding those for you momentarily. The first question that I see is what specific challenges do you see companies face when working to vet develop a successful data strategy? Um, it, it goes back to changing the mindset, right? It's um, and the people in process specifically um, when you're trying to adopt the technology, um, people will take the path of least resistance. So if there's, you know, if they are not required to do it, if, if there's no metrics or no useful features that they need, um, most likely they're not going to do it. I know, um, as an example, there was um, a company who built a very good sales tool. Um, and they gave it to um, their sales team to use, but there was no real adoption of it. Initially, um, people used it for about the first three months. It was a new tool, new features, a cool little shiny object that people gravitated to. But after that, um, people stopped using it. So what happened was they took a new approach after a couple months realizing what had happened and they brought in the sales team they showed them um, and made them coaches and made them part of the experience so that they could go out and then coach others um, what happened um, was the adoption rate increased right it wasn't just a signy tool it was functionality that they could use on a daily basis they could do kpis over it. Um, another company also um, required or had management senior leadership I include um, KPIs reports within their daily meetings um, with their direct reports K kind of like a status report type thing and they rewarded people that had completeness of data um, and were able to um, I guess show their solution to other team members and really kind of upgrade the reporting process. Um, so let me grab another question here. Um, what is the best piece of advice uh, to learn more or want to learn more? Uh, there's a lot of great companies out there that uh, provide guidance and leadership. Um, there's, um, you know, podcasts you can attend. Um, I would suggest, um, you know, working with a company that has done this previously, or even a vendor that has done this previously. Um, they're going to be able to have some of these insights on what's worked well with their tool and what hasn't worked well. And so, Leveraging um, those that have the that have gone through this previously is really um, what I've seen as kind of the best strategy. Again, there are companies, um, and I don't want to name anyone specifically, but there are companies that can help you through that process. Um, what role does data ethics play in data leadership? That's a great question. Um, you know. As we go through data leadership and building out and, and kind of incorporating um, all the things that need to be there and providing that guidance, you have to have a solid uh, ethical statue um, to that other people can look to, that other kind of like leading principles um, to guide them. Um, many people consider that like the North Star where they look at um, what 
the company should be doing. And that kind of goes back to um, my previous comment about compliance. You know, just because you can monetize your data, just because there's not a law that says you can't do it, really doesn't mean you should do it, right? If you um, give away, for me, uh, the keys to the kingdom for an, a, a business is their data. And if you give away your data, um, then you're actually given the keys to the business, right? I mean, in some respects, then all you have is a customer list and you don't have as much anymore. Like that really adds value to an organization. So be careful about the data um, you populate and expose to the public. Be careful about your ethical decisions on what you're doing with the data. And um, just realize that um, the decisions you make now could have a lasting impact to the business for many, many years. Okay, let me grab another question here. Any tips for data leaders to effectively communicate the value of data to non-technical stakeholders? Yeah, so this is this is kind of a tricky one because um, your non-technical people, when they don't understand stuff, um, tend to say that's a, a technology solution, and they don't realize that it's really a people in process. I mentioned that earlier in, in my presentation where you have to get out of that mindset and get more aligned to um, you know, educating your people about data, um, providing guidance to them, um, helping them understand that it's really the um, process um, that's going to help them. So you have to pick uh, tools that are on their level in some respects, whether or not you create a, a, a blog for, on your internet site, whether or not you create newsletters to help educate them. Um, I, I would encourage that because helping their knowledge um, and bringing them into the fold will help um, tremendously later on because they are now incorporated into the process and they're, they have more ownership over the data. And so giving them that um, olive branch to be part of the decision-making process with the data is going to help the, uh, the adoption rate. Um, let's see. Here's another question. What specific skills do you think make the most difference for leaders trying to be more effective in data management? Um, I think bias for action, you know, having that, so you don't have to have everything perfect with your building out um, your solution, right? You just have to take a small problem and iterate on it and and push it out there as quickly as possible. So having someone who has a bias for action um, is not key, but it is um, a feature or a skill set that helps um, with the adoption and being able to show value with the data. Um, thinking big, that's also another one. Um, if you can't have someone who you know, has more of a vision from a strategic standpoint, as well as um, a tactical one on this is where we are, this is where we want to be, and here's how we're going to get there. We're going to take these small steps, baby steps, and turn those into bigger steps. That's really what you, you know, you need is that vision for the organization. Um, you know, I don't look at uh, solutions as you know just a business area but a lot of uh strategic decisions corporate wide or organization wide can be made from the data so helping them um be part of that uh, so your your leadership that's kind of driving making those decisions with data leadership um having them more along and part of the decision making process 
um, from a strategic standpoint on the organization will help the organization grow and expand. Um, is there a way to estimate the value of your data, not as a revenue source, but simply to show its value for the executive team? I haven't found, and honestly, I haven't found um, a good way to do that, right? Because you can have, you can't really go by volume of data. You can have, you know, petabytes of data, but if it's not meaningful data, then it's, you know, no good to the organization. I mean, it, you know, having a table that doesn't really provide any insights is not really um, useful. So, as far as hard as I, I mean, I like to have an answer for everything, but it's really difficult to try to put estimation of your data. Um, and one of the things that you you might be able to do is work with the business. They know the value of the data the best. Like what is important in this data? How do you use this data? Um, you know, so not just from a monetization standpoint, but how important is this table? You can kind of look at your RPO and RTO um, as examples. And, and those are just terms to mean that if your data was to be unavailable, how long could the business continue to work? And if they, if it's, you know, they can't get by without the data in less than um, any time longer than an hour, then you know that there's value in that data. Um, so I would start there and look at kind of your um, business impact analysis document, look at your CISO or your compliance area to say, you know, where does the business um, have those metrics to say that they can't work without uh, for very long without uh, data or access to data and start from that standpoint and look at, all right, if, if the business, you know, needs this data quickly, then there's got to be value there. Let's start there and try to make some assumptions, talk to the business area on how we can make this, um, you know, not monetize, but show value to the senior leadership that if one area of the business can't, um, sustain operations for very long, then it's most likely that there's a lot of value there. Okay, so um, from my perspective, um, that's kind of the presentation. Um, back to you. Thank you so much, Greg, for um, setting this the tone for the event with so many of the good data topics that will be discussed throughout today's event. And thank you for that excellent keynote. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for this session today. This session, along with all of today's content, will be available on demand following the event. And as a reminder, please do check out the prizes and raffle rules section to see how you can earn points for the chance to win a prize. And our next session will begin at 11.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that will be a panel discussion titled AI Governance Security Risk. Please click the Join button that will appear on your screen to be redirected to that session, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you again, Greg. You're welcome.